past 30 years, the films of Ken Burns have covered the Civil War, the Vietnam War, baseball, jazz, and more. His latest project chronicling the story of country music from the hollers of West Virginia to the fields of California may be his most emotional. We sat down with Burns this week here in New York and one of the film stars in Nashville to look beyond any current definition of country music and uncover its true roots. Country music has never gotten the kind of comprehensive treatment you're about to see. What was it about that one moment when you said, I, I, I have to do this? I suddenly realized that this would be American history firing on all cylinders, but just great stories. Just a good old boy. Defining country may be impossible, but what is possible is tracing its roots back to America's coming of age. From the fiddlers, and the banjo players to Jimmy Rogers and his yodeling. Burns, over the course of more than 16 hours and eight days, explores the highs and lows of country's history. Gene Autry's singing cowboy. Even the long jacket was there. Dolly Parton's breakthrough. Jolene, Jolene. And the meteoric rise of Garth Brooks. At the heart of so many of the stories is the Carter family, starting with the Carter family singers in the 1920s. Later, June Carter and Johnny Cash's marriage created a dysfunctional dynasty that affected nearly every corner of country music's future. Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. My dad. He worked out all of his problems on stage. That's where he took his anguish and fears and griefs, and he worked them out with an audience. That's just who he was. Instead of focusing on historians in this documentary, Burns went straight to the musicians. Legends like Merle Haggard, Chris Christopherson, And Marty Stewart. The thing I love about this all of a sudden country music in the 21st century is all now elevated thanks to Ken Burns. Is this a reset for country music? I think so. Stewart is country music's unofficial record keeper, a man trained by Lester Flatt, Bill Monroe, and Haggard and Cash. He was the person who guided Burns and his lead writer Dayton Duncan more than anyone else. He saved every scrap of paper, every telegram, every photograph, every uniform. He knows the history back and forth, and he, in the course of it, has seen everything. We met Stewart in Nashville, where his famous mandolin is its own piece of history. Bob Dylan, Ricky Skaggs, Chet Atkins, B.B. King, Charlie Pride. So what was it that grabbed you at such an early age? I didn't want to go to New York. I didn't want to go to L.A. I wanted to go to Nashville and play country music because those stories that I heard Johnny Cash sing me, and Johnny Western sing me. Those stories that they sang, it was like folk heroes talking to me. You've got to kiss an angel good morning. One thing often ignored or misunderstood in the history of country music is the influence of African Americans. Everything in America, every manifestation is never a one thing because it's America, it's a many things. It's an alloy, stronger by that combination. So country music is itself born in as much African-American history as it is in what we think is sort of white, rural, southern history. So many of these musicians had black mentors. Yes. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. No, you, let's take the Mount Rushmore of, of early country music and say A.P. Carter of the Carter family, I'd put up there, obviously Hank Williams, obviously Bill Monroe, the inventor of bluegrass, obviously Johnny Cash. Now those four men all had African-American mentors. Also covered another sometimes sidelined part of country's history. The women's role in country music, you can never diminish that. You pull out uh, Loretta and Patsy and Connie and Dolly, there, there's a vast void in the story of country music. Well, maybe not after this series. I hope not. 
we tend to, in, in the way we categorize country music, we denigrate it. It's never been given the respect it deserves. And so, you know, we don't think it's got the same chops as jazz or blues or rhythm and blues or rock and roll. But yet, in the mid 60s, Loretta Lynn is singing, Don't Come Home a Drinkin' with Lovin' on Your Mind. So don't come home a drinkin' with lovin' on your mind. Nobody in rock or folk is singing that. That's way ahead of anybody else. Now, she's not going to call herself a feminist. But she's speaking for women and their aspirations and their frustrations better than anyone else. Well, a lot of things have changed since way back then. If you write the truth and you write the song and you're right, sitting here writing about your life, it's going to be country. Loretta Lynn singing about motherhood and birth control was as honest as it gets. A canvas covered cabin in a crowded labor camp. So is Merle Haggard talking about what it was like to grow up in a family of Okies, migrants from the Dust Bowl who went to California during the Great Depression, where they were seen as a lower class. Haggard died in 2016, but spoke to Burns at length before he passed. The human being has a history of being awful cruel to some something different. Merle Haggard is distilling all of that pain and suffering and channeled it into poetry that all of us can identify with. Country music is about love and loss. I think so. And if you think about the great songs, you know, uh, Johnny Cash, At My Door the Leaves Are Falling. At my door the leaves are falling. A cold, wild wind will come. Wild wind will come. I wonder if she's sorry. I wonder if she's sorry for, for leaving what we'd begun. There's someone for me somewhere, because I still miss someone. I mean, <laughs> can't beat it. You cannot beat it. I still miss someone. Three chords and the truth, as mm. they say, country music. So of the more than 100 people that Ken Burns talked to for this documentary, 20 have since died, including wow. Merle Haggard, which makes it historically an even more important document, yeah. um, which is why it's all been donated now to the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum. He doesn't deal with any music, any country music from the past 25 years because, as he says, he's a historian, and we don't know where the placement of all those folks right. currently singing might be. It takes time to get there. And there's so much to deal with yeah. from the 1920s to the 1990s. But 16 hours, right? Yeah. 16 hours plus. <laughs> Divide it up. I'll tell you okay. what, this is, and this is what's surprising. You, you, you walk in, it, it is heavy. So you go in, it, 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 it is powerful. Yeah. Um, and whether you're a country music fan or not, or think you know country music, it is worth checking out. You learn something. I think that's exactly yeah. it. I love Loretta Lynn. When you write about the truth about life, it's country if music. If you're writing about truth and a song, <laughs> it's country music.